Hi there and welcome back to the M5 Stack official channel. I'm Luke and in this video we're carrying on from where we left off last time. Okay, so let's see now how we can program the GPIOs on the reverse of the M5 Atom. We have four pins on the right hand side, five pins on the left, and we can look at the documentation page here to see what the functions of these are. So first a simple test, turning on an LED. So here I have a red LED, just a simple red LED. I'm sure most of you are familiar with LEDs. We have the short leg, the cathode, and the long leg, which is the anode. And the cathode, the short leg, should be put into ground. So I know this first pin here on the right is the ground pin. So I'll put that in there. And then the other pin can be put into any of the other GPIOs. So I'm going to put it into here, which is GPIO pin 33. Okay, now we'll go over to Python. And first we want to import pin. So we type from machine import pin. Okay, and we're going to try and blink this little LED as well. So I'm going to need time so we can delay the time between switch on and switch off. Then we set up the pin, I can call it LED pin and then pin so I'm going to be using pin 33 as I said and then we need to set it whether it's an input or an output so we simply type pin dot out okay now we can toggle the value of the LED pin LED pin dot value and then we either put a 0 or a 1 or put a 1 and there we go, we can see now the LED is turned on. Okay, and then as you would imagine, we can just type zero, turn it off. For a simple loop, to blink it, we can simply type while true LED pin dot value one, and then time dot sleep microseconds. Let's just put it to something like 500, okay, and then again we can put it to off and then make it sleep again. And then backspace, hit enter, and now we have a nice little blinking circuit. Wasn't that easy? Now I was hoping to get the MPU6886 working, which shows here the SCL pin is 21, SDA pin is 25, so first we import the I2C from machine and also we import pin again. And now setting I2C is quite simple. We can create an I2C object. It's optional we could add in the frequency here but I'm just going to add both the clock pin and the data pin. And then once that's set up, I'll do a scan. But, strangely, nothing appears on the scan. If we look in the GitHub at the I2C addresses, this should appear as 68. I looked in the Arduino sketch also, and there's no sign of this address. Just this strange piece of code here. Which hints that the address should be 0. That's a shame that we couldn't get that working. Perhaps a little bit more research is needed. We can get I2 sensors working on the growth port, however. Here I have a I2C color sensor from Seed Studio. It's using the same chip as the I2C color sensor unit. So all we need to do is plug it into the growth port. Now we can already see it's getting power. So now let's set up in the 
So now let's set up I2C to test this. We can look in the documentation pages and see that all of the units will usually show the model number of the particular sensor being used. Since we can't find the Python libraries for these in the M5 Stack GitHub, a quick Google search will find a MicroPython library for these. So all we need to do is download it and then transfer it across to the flash or SD card using a program such as UPI Loader. In a previous video I showed how you can transfer files easily to the flash of the M5 stack device. Now that's successfully transferred across we can start a session again set up the I2C but this time we'll be using the Grove port pins which are 32 for SCL and 26 for SDA. Now once we do a scan we can see an address appear 41. The I2C scan function always outputs the address as a decimal number but we can quickly transfer it to hex to see the standard method. Now if I compare with Seed's documentation of the I2C addresses it matches up. I can quickly double check that that Python library I transferred is on the file system and then go about importing it. Now it's just a case of simply creating an object and then configuring it with the I2C object that we just made. Most sensors are set up in this way in MicroPython. Now every sensor is different and you should check the specific documentation for each sensor but with this particular sensor I can simply use the command color.read and get the RGB and clear values. I create a while loop to continue scanning and then I can test it out. Last but not least is the IR LED. It seems quite early days yet for any stable libraries here but the RMT module inside the ESP32 module seems quite promising. I managed to get the IR LED to emit an infrared pulse on the press of the button. I plan to do a different video in the future entirely focusing on infrared and how we can use it to control our various M5 stack devices. I hope you enjoyed our video today. Please make sure to leave a comment if you have any questions. I'll be leaving all of the document links down in the description. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.